Hello, I'm Deacon Lewis Peters. I'm Chancellor of the Maronite Eparchy of Our Lady of Lebanon of Los Angeles. I also uh, assist at the St. Raymond's Co-Cathedral in St. Louis, Missouri. I've been asked to reflect on a passage from the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, and I'd like to read that passage for you. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me. Let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. So let me ask you a question. Are you thirsty? Sounds like a beer commercial, but it's not. In this gospel passage from St. John, Jesus offers us living water. In today's world, and especially in our part of the world, water is pretty much taken for granted. We have clean water with the turn of a faucet or by simply unscrewing the cap of a bottle. Of course, it was never always that way, and in some parts of the world, this is still the case. But we now know that water is absolutely essential for our lives. When we read the Bible, water, more often than not, is considered a source of life. No water, no life. When the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, God gave them water to drink through the hand of Moses. Moses struck a rock with his staff and water gushed out. God gave them water to satisfy their bodily needs. There are many, many more references to water in the Bible. God himself is often compared to water. In this gospel story from St. John, the Jews are celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles, Sukkot in Hebrew, and on this last day of the week-long festival, the Jewish priests would circle the altar of the temple in Jerusalem seven times, carrying containers of water. It was a remembrance of the water which was given to them by God while they were wandering in the wilderness, and for them it was a source of life. The people listening to Jesus and the early Christians hearing John's gospel would have known about the ceremony of water in the temple. But the water that the Jewish priest used was nothing more than just plain old water. It was not living water. It did not have any power to transform them or to satisfy their deeper spiritual thirst, only their bodily thirst. It was just a commemoration of something more than a thousand years before. But what Jesus offers us is not water to keep our bodies alive. And Jesus does not just give us the water of eternal life, the living water. Jesus is this living water. He is what we need for eternal life. He gives us himself. Jesus invites us to come and to drink of this water that is his very self. It is through him that we share in the life of the Spirit, in the life of God, and he offers us nothing less than himself. Of course, we must come to drink this water. We must come to the Lord and accept this gift. But equally important is that we must first recognize the thirst within us. I think we all have this thirst, but some of us do not know how and how to deal with this thirst or what this thirst really is. I think it's a thirst for God. And this thirst for God is implanted within us by God himself. Sometimes we think we can quench this thirst with earthly things, with money or fame, or even satisfy this thirst through another person. But we can't. When we drink earthly water, we just become thirsty again, and often in a very short time. Trying to satisfy the spiritual thirst with earthly water, that is, the things of this world, can also result in sin. So let me ask you the same question I started with. Are you thirsty? 
What do you do for this thirst you have? Jesus invites those who recognize their thirst, those who are humble enough to see the need within themselves, to take the first step and come to him and drink. What does that mean? Well, doing the Lord's will, trusting in the Lord, accepting the teachings of the Lord, and obeying the commands of the Lord. Today, we have this water. We have eternal life. We only need to drink of it. So may the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be glorified now and forever. Amen.